David Brewster here with another Three for All, and this is Three George Lynch Licks from 1989. And of course, George Lynch is a guitar icon, you know, a shred, you know, guitar hero. And uh, very respected, you know, still very popular. Lots of people still talk about George. Actually, I've had a number of you uh, out there, you know, watching that commented and requested, you know, more George Lynch. And some of you noticed that I hadn't made, you know, kind of a Three for All uh, using, you know, live clips or footage, you know, featuring George Lynch, and that's exactly what this is. Um, I did do a three-for-all where it was like three scary, you know, George Lynch licks, and that was a while ago. That was kind of earlier on this channel. I didn't have the fancy light, so it's kind of a dark video, and it's kind of shadowy. I'm not a big fan of those early videos, but I was just kind of getting used to the camera and getting used to doing this, so uh, I left it up because, you know, people did seem to like it, even though it looks like I'm in a cave, even though I'm sitting, you know, like right here. But anyway, um, you know, George is a guitar legend, you know, obviously famous from playing with Dokken and his own group Lynch Mob, and he's, you know, played in a bunch of side projects with people like Doug Pinnock and uh, Michael Sweet and a whole bunch of people. And one thing that a lot of people don't know about George is his connection with like Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne. Because in case you don't realize, uh, George auditioned for Ozzy Osbourne, and Ozzy chose Randy Rhodes. And when he picked Randy, George actually took Randy's place at Dolores Rhodes Music School, and he started teaching at Randy's mother's, you know, music school out in California. And uh, and then after Randy passed away, um, he auditioned again, and Ozzy actually hired him for three days, and he was actually officially, you know, part of the Ozzy Osbourne band. But then Ozzy changed his mind, I'm not sure why, and he chose Jakey Lee. And of course, Jakey Lee and George are friends, and Warren D. Martini and Jake are friends, and then Warren D. Martini and George Lynch are friends, so there's like this little circle of those three players. They know each other, you know, they've borrowed gear, they've stolen licks, you know, they audition for each other's bands and all kinds of stuff, so it's an interesting little, you know, triad of friends that happen to be you know, guitar heroes or guitar icons and legends, and it's really interesting. So, uh, the licks from this lesson come from a guitar clinic that George did in Japan back in 89, and it's kind of an awkward video. If you find it on YouTube, it's about 25 minutes long, and like the first part is like a sound check, and then the second part he's actually doing the clinic, and you can see there's people in the room with him. And it's a little awkward because, you know, the translator, the host, you know, is asking George questions and George answers and then he translates it to Japanese. And then while he's translating, you know, George is sitting there like noodling around and just kind of goofing around with the guitar. And uh, it's kind of strange. And then he starts breaking down these licks and phrases and uh, the guy is kind of there with the microphone. And it's, it's a little, you know, weird to watch George in that environment because you can tell I mean, he seemed like he was in a good mood, but you could tell he's like a little uncomfortable. It's a little awkward, you know, as far as the way it's set up. And then finally he just starts jamming, you know, near the end and then it stops. But the licks that I chose for this lesson came from that clip. So I'd highly recommend, you know, there's like 25 minutes of George in a Japanese classroom just shredding, you know, and throwing out licks and playing around. And it's really cool though. But uh, anyway, here we go. First lick actually came uh, from this, this video that I found, and George actually says, you know, this is a diminished idea, and then you hear the translator host, you know, repeat that to the crowd, and then when he plays, he plays this. <laughs> That's not diminished, but that's okay, because it's a cool phrase. Um, but uh, he basically plays that. And then he starts moving it around in bass highway like a diminished arpeggio, but it's not a diminished arpeggio, and that's not in bass highway. Um, but it's okay. I'm not, I'm not making fun of George at all. He's a monster. Um, and sometimes when somebody asks you a question, you're like, you know, what is that? You know, sometimes you might get a little, you know, uh, hurried with the answer and you might spit out the wrong, you know, the wrong thing. I've done that myself sitting right here in this chair talking to this camera. So I'm fully aware of, you know, making mistakes and, you know, saying the wrong key or the wrong, you know, tonality or something like that. Um, so it's all right. We're not going to crucify George for saying that this was diminished. But, you know, you might be thinking, well, what is it? 
You know, so right there, if we played, instead of playing, you know, B, if we played a C right there, then that would be diminished. You know, and I recently broke those arpeggios down in the, the breaking chords, you know, diminished arpeggio lesson. But what George was playing is that. Now, that would basically be uh, like a B major uh, with an A in the root, right? If we thought of it like a chord or an arpeggio, right? So that'd be like a B over A or a B7 over A. A really interesting sound. There's your root, your third, your fifth, and then that flat seven, you know, kind of hiding right there. What I did is I actually took the idea that George, you know, showed in the video clip and then I turned it into a lick, you know, so I'm not going to show you the the incorrect Ingbe Highway. Um, I mean, you can try that if you want, but it's just going to sound kind of out of key because um, it's not actually diminished. But, uh, you know, if we take this, we can kind of navigate through that tonality. And that's kind of what I came up with. And you can see there, I'm just capturing a little piece of the arpeggio. And then I'm sliding up into that same position that George showed. I'm sliding up into another position. Cool lick. The next idea is the stretchy uh, A harmonic minor run. And uh, we're basically going to start on the B string and you're going to stretch, you know, there from E, F to G sharp, grab A there on the fifth fret on the high E come back down and then grab D right there on the G string on the seventh fret. So slowly, it's gonna sound like this. And it's a really cool lick. Is a stretchy you can use legato you could also pick through that a little bit more if you wanted to but i kind of like the legato you know kind of slurry sound uh, for that phrase it kind of reminds me of licks that you would hear you know eddie van halen or even someone like paul gilbert play but it's harmonic minor right and um you know kind of a modified van halen lick but it's you know just a little stretched out and using a different scale and tonality but i like that phrase it's really cool the next lick uh, from this video, he actually, he's playing um, this little kind of sequence or, you know, melodic sequence. And it's honestly the exact same sequence that I showed in the Richie Kotzen 3 for All. And it's the same sequence that Richie showed in his instructional video, like the Rock Chops, you know, back in the, the REH, you know, uh, instructional video days. But he was using it with legato, you know, down here. <laughs> George is doing, he's way up here in G minor, and he's doing this. Now you can pick it, or you could use legato. But what George does is he plays that sequence. And then he basically reaches all the way up to D on the 22nd fret, and then continues that sequence. And then D flat or C sharp. And then C natural. And then he does the first sequence again. Now you could also do that with legato. You can also tap it too, which George is a big tapper. Uh, you can do it like this.
All right, here's a bonus lick from this uh, clip that I kind of chopped up. And uh, this is a pedal point idea. You know, most guitarists out there, when they think of pedal point, they usually think of Ingve, and that's accurate. But for some reason, this lick reminds me more of something you'd hear Randy Rhodes play, even though Randy didn't really use pedal point. You know, I mean, he, there's a few licks, you know, that kind of dipped into almost like a pedal point move. Um, but not really the same sound or style that you would hear, like, say, from, you know, Bach or or obviously Ingve too on guitar. But um, it's an interesting phrase, it's an E minor, and right off the bat, he starts on D and then moves to the pedal point note, which is E. So it's a little, you know, different than a traditional, like, Ingve pedal point lick, because usually Ingve would start on E. You know, but George is starting on the D. Like that. It's a cool phrase. And I like the fact he's kind of moving down, you know, and linking octaves uh, as he played through it, which that's a concept, you know, I've talked about here on Late Night Lessons, and that's an idea I picked up from Paul Gilbert. And here's George Lynch doing it back in 89, you know, so uh, maybe Paul you know, might have picked this up from George Lynch, you know, or something, I don't know. It's a tricky little lick, you know. And you can decide, you know, how long you want to trill. Um, he was also stopping, you know, between each octave, and there I just kind of connected all of it together. I mean, you can kind of put that together however you want, but that's a cool phrase, though, for sure. All right, that's going to wrap this look at three licks from George Lynch from way back in 1989. And uh, please leave some feedback and comments and subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back with some more content material very soon. Thank you.